Alright, so in this equation, I have 1 to the power of x is equal to 3. So this might seem like an impossible equation, right? Because how can 1 be to the power of any number and equal to, th equal to 3 if 1 to the power of even a million is still equal to 1? Well, let's try to solve this equation the way we would solve any other exponential equation. The first thing I would do is take the natural log or ln on both sides. So I get ln 1 to the power of x is equal to ln 3. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this can equal b times ln a. In this case, I have ln 1 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So now I get x times ln 1 is equal to ln 3. And now if I divide both sides by ln 1, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to ln 3 over ln 1. Now, if you guys already didn't know, ln 1 is equal to 0. So I get x is equal to ln 3 over 0, and you can't take any number and divide it by 0 because that's undefined, meaning this has no solution. So that method doesn't work. However, this, mean, this just means that there are no real solutions. But there are different types of solutions. So what I'm going to do to solve this equation is, first, let's recall Euler's formula. And if you guys don't know what this is, it states that if I have something in the form e to the power of i times theta, this is equal to cos of theta plus i times sine of theta. And I know this may seem a little complicated right now, but just bear with me. So let's say that theta here is equal to 0. So if theta equals 0, then I get e to the power of i times 0 is equal to cos of 0 plus i times sine of 0. So then I get e to the power of 0 is equal to 1, cos of 0 is 1, plus sine of 0 is 0, and 0 times i is 0, so 1 plus 0. And e to the power of 0 is 1, so I get 1 is equal to 1 plus 0. Now, what if we say that theta is equal to 2k pi? k being a constant. So it could equal any number, 1, 2, or 3. So if I plug this in, I get e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to cos of 2k pi plus i times sine of 2k pi. Now, what if k is equal to 1? What if our constant k is equal to 1? Then I get e to the power of i times 2 pi is equal to cosine of 2 pi plus i times sine of 2 pi. Now, cosine of 2 pi is 1, and sine of 2 pi is 0. So I get this is equal to 1. Now, if k is equal to 2, I would get cos of 4 pi plus i of sine 4 pi. Cos of 4 pi is 1, and i times sine of 4 pi is again 0. And if I do the same thing with 3, I would again get 1 plus 0. So this pattern continues, and it keeps on equaling 1, no matter what value of k we get. 
So we can say that e to the power of i times 2k pi, this is equal to 1 no matter what value of k we have. So now this means that we can substitute this in back to our original equation, which is 1 to the power of x is equal to 3. This is our original equation. And we can substitute in 1 for e to the power of i times 2k pi. So now I get e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 3. And this is my new equation. So now to solve this, I'm going to do what I did at the start. I'm going to take the natural log or ln on both sides. So I get ln e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to ln of 3. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so I get b times ln a. In this case, I can move x to the front, so I get x times ln e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to ln 3. Now, I'm going to use this property again and move this to the front as well. So I get i times 2k pi times ln e is equal to ln 3. And ln e, ln and e, these two cancel out. So now I'm left with i times 2k pi is equal to ln 3. Sorry, and I also have x. Now I'm going to divide both sides by i times 2k pi. So then these cancel out, and I get x is equal to ln3 over i times 2k pi. Now I'm going to multiply this by i over i, which is the same thing as 1. So I get x is equal to i times ln 3 over i times i is i squared. And if you guys already know, i squared is equal to negative 1. So over negative 2k pi. And k, in this case, can't equal 0. Because if k over 0, this is wouldn't work. So this is my solution to this equation. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the problem 500 squared minus 499 squared. So to solve this, what I'm first going to do is rewrite this as 499 plus 1 squared minus 499 squared. And if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So 499 plus 1 squared is turned into 499 squared plus 2 times 499 times 1 plus 1 squared and I have this minus 499 squared. Now, I can cancel out 499 squared and negative 499 squared. So I'll be left with 2 times 499 times 1 plus 1 squared. 2 times 499 is 998 times 1 is just 998. And I have this plus 1 squared, which is plus 1. And this is equal to 999. Now, I actually have another method of solving this. So I have 500 squared minus 499 squared. And this time, I'm going to rewrite this as 500 squared minus 500 minus 1 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a minus b squared, this is equal to a minus b times a minus b, which is equal to, if I factor the, this out, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. 
So this is going to turn into 500 squared minus 500 squared minus 2 times 500 times 1 plus b squared, which is 1 squared. So these two cancel out. However, this is actually going to be in parentheses. So the negative sign distributes. So this turns into 500 squared minus 500 squared plus 2 times 500 times 1, which is the same thing as 2 times 500, minus 1 squared. Now these two can cancel out, so I get 1,000 minus 1, which is equal to 999. So again, I get 999 as my answer.